it's just mind blowing. Can you imagine? You're a policeman wearing all of those devices on your belt, on your chest, and that will be replaced with one single vest. All the technologies integrated into that vest. Got my badge. Hey. Got the overview. Let's go. buttons what it what it means and so in other words what happens then oh, man. Max for stopping you're driving too fast so let's see if we can break this body over here IoT pager in the world. So if we're talking about gadgets, and that is definitely a, well, a gadget somebody really wants to have, the first IoT pager in the world is the Birdie Slim. Available for LoRa, Sigfox, and Bluetooth connection. We have launched also in the PM Expo the first IPS solution, indoor positioning system for paging system. So it's a Bluetooth beacon and the gateway to make a mesh network between each beacon uh, and to receive information and send information from the, the pager. So for those who think paging is dead, paging is alive as ever before. If, if we want to find out what a future policeman should wear or will wear, Motorola Solutions has the answer, is it? We're working on it. You're working on <laughs> what I can see here. I can. What I can see here, this is a policeman of the more or less of the future, right? He's wearing several kind of devices. I think we're going to see a lot of sensors uh, in the future. Sensors. So, yes, what do you sensors. mean by sensors? So, I think of a sensor as a way for connecting the physical world to the digital world. If you think of it that way. So, today we have officers carrying all sorts of things. They have tasers. They have uh, pepper spray. They carry batons, and we can we can get a lot of information from this. So. With a sensor we can detect if one of these is taken out and we can also uh, combine that information with a, a body-worn device which a lot of police officers are carrying today and smart device as well. So a lot of officers carry smartphones, we all know that, as well as radios. We can effectively create what I would call a, a personal area network which has a context engine, and that context engine is detecting what is happening with all these devices, um, using that as intelligence about the context of the officer, and we can do things like uh, activate uh, the body one video in certain situations. So normally the officer would press the emergency button, right, when they're in trouble. We can automate this now. And this is all made possible with developments in Bluetooth. Uh, we're seeing uh, new Bluetooth standards and uh, sensor technology, quite frankly, and um, improvements in processing power. So you might not see this, but actually I'm right now wearing a police radio. Where do I wear the radio? Well, it's not on my belt. It's, it's somewhere around my chest. And this vest makes all communications possible for the future policemen. Now, there are all kinds of buttons on this vest in order to interact very rapidly with the situation I'm in. Uh, Tunde, can you explain exactly these buttons, what it, what it means? And well, so you got some familiar buttons there. Obviously, you got push the talk button, uh, you got an emergency button uh, on your left shoulder, and uh, you got an LED, like a status uh, LED that you have on a radio, and you have your talk group changes, uh, button, volume control, and uh, uh, fast access buttons. So, so, yeah. so for the future, we don't need a radio on our belt or on our chest. This is the radio. Absolutely. We always want to wear this device as a radio, so we're used to communicate this way. But this goes away, and it will be replaced by all of this. Potentially. This is mind-blowing. Can you imagine? You're a policeman wearing all of those devices on your belt, on your chest, and that will be replaced with one single vest. All the technologies integrated into that vest.
it is a very short walk from the booth of Motorola Solutions to one of their distributors in the Netherlands and I found this booth as a really exciting booth because there's much going on here actually. You have this strange little thing here over here. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I, I can see somewhere a uh, red light or orange light over there. Well, what, what's happening here? I'm gonna explain to you. I That's Petra from Selexis. Hello. Hello, I'm Petra. We have uh, a story in our stand. We try to visualize it. We start with a, 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 a chemistry a factory. That's picture one. In picture two, something happens. Explosion? An explosion or a chemical leak or something. Bam. Then, uh, if that occurs, somebody's uh, using the emergency shower. Yes. That's happening on picture three. All right. And the emergency shower is uh, generating a, a, a signal to the dispatcher. I get it. I get it. Wait, this is the emergency shower. Yes. So, actually, uh, right now underneath the emergency shower. So when I I can pull this one over here. Okay. Let me see what happening here. Yeah. So I'm being showered right now, nothing going on here. What happens is that the emergency shower generates an alarm to the wave system of the dispatcher. And there are the communication networks coming together. So all the alarms that needed to be activated are activated because of this signal. Then, because it's about people, uh, somebody is in the shower, so there must be ha something happening. The dispatcher has to inform the, uh, the the ambulance of the fire department and everything that needs to be done. All emergency so services are being alerted and then the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there was a prize on the nicest booth with the nicest story, I think the company Selexis has earned a prize. It's a good story, it's being very well visualized here at the booth. We're not, talk we're not talking about techniques, we're talking about people here. And it's about people, it's is it? People. That's an interesting charger. There is this little company from Germany. They are famous, actually worldwide famous, about their chargers. Now, you would probably maybe think about a charger is just a charger. You know, what do you do with a charger? How sexy is a charger? Probably not that sexy, but... You know, what happens if you make a charger a little bit more sexier, a little bit more of, the, of something for today? Mr. Wimpy, you made a charger, well actually you make chargers for almost all of your life. I think in the near of 200 different products we have, only the vehicle charger uh, for use the radio inside the car with antenna connector or with other things to connect to the portable radio. And now? We bring a USB charger connect. How simple is that? I think you're the first to introduce something very simple like that. We will make it for our chargers all on we have now. We will bring this USB connector to the It charger. makes sense, does it? Yes, it does make sense. So if, uh, if we're going through this wireless world where we're all wearing all kinds of devices on our chest as a police yes, officer, we need to charge it. My way. And the, time, and, you, and the police officer is not always on the street, they're in the car as well. So by the time they're in the car, they put them on the charger. And you have a connector for your portable or your smartphone, body cam, power bank. You can charge all your things you have. It's just as simple as that. <laughs> this is the smallest two-way radio I have ever seen in my life. Hello? Yes, uh, it's, it's Gertjan Wolf. <laughs> this is this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> this is cool. This is this is cool stuff. <laughs> this is very cool stuff. Actually, so where, so what kind of end users um, are you selling this product to? Mm. Industry. Industry. Service. Service industry. So, uh, like the restaurant, hotel, or. Uh, supermarket and so on. Okay, I already thought this is not public safety grade stuff. Still analog, but it's it's kind of nice. Are they waterproof? Not. They're not waterproof. Waterproof. Oh, that one. That one is waterproof. All right. Max, Max, for stopping. You're driving too fast. This is what Riedel uses during large events. Let's say the Red Bull event. That is 
the outdoor repeater of Comscop. Now, outdoor repeater must definitely work in any conditions. So definitely also here in these humid conditions right now. If you are talking about gadgets, I have found the world's thinnest 19-inch rack. The thinnest 19-inch rack on the whole planet. Uh, that's here with the booth of Motorola Solution. That is the 19-inch rack. Um, that's a visual of an airport. Of course, they just won Leipzig Airport. This 19-inch rack is just as thin as that. Take a look. That's the size of a 19-inch rack at Motorola Solutions. I think that's the world's thinnest one. You know, how do they do that?